Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mengs, and today I want to ask you guys a question. Is the popularity of the Fire Emblem franchise declining? In this video, I will do a lot more than just speculate. I will show you some statistics. What you are seeing in front of you is a chart from Google Trends, showing Fire Emblem's popularity on YouTube from 2008 all the way up until the current day. This is interesting data because, as opposed to sales numbers, which are just static, we can go through this chart and see how each Fire Emblem game generated interest on YouTube, and also how long the hype trend lasted for each of them. Of course, there's more to a franchise's popularity than just how interested people are in watching videos on YouTube, but despite that, I still think this data is very interesting to analyze, especially if you are a content creator, because it really puts things into perspective. Looking back at this chart, we can see that Fire Emblem's popularity peaked in February of 2017 with the release of Fire Emblem Heroes. Sadly, Google Trends doesn't tell us how many people were searching and watching YouTube content at this time, it just compares all the other numbers to this peak. So for example, the number 47 just means that the series is at 47% of its peak popularity. What I want to do is go over this chart and see how good each game was in terms of generating YouTube hype. Do forgive my voice, I am a little bit sick at the time of recording this, but let's go back to the very beginning of 2008, which is when YouTube started gathering its data. 2008 was a very weird time for YouTube content. Most of the videos available at the time were commercials and soundtrack videos. I actually tried to see if I could locate the oldest Fire Emblem video on YouTube, but Google has made it increasingly hard to dig up ancient history, and some of the oldest ones I could find dated back to 2006, two years before YouTube started gathering data. In 2008, the franchise started off at 35% peak popularity, with Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn being the current latest game in the franchise. While Radiant Dawn has later garnered a almost cult-like popularity in the fandom, it was considered a big flop in terms of sales at the time. However, in terms of popularity on YouTube, Fire Emblem continued trending upwards to 49% of peak popularity until the release of Shadow Dragon in August 2008. This game was met with a lot of criticism and scorn from the fanbase at the time, being perceived as a bland and soulless remake, and this is reflected in the popularity trends, sloping downward to a measly 17%, with only a slight spike up to 27% in July of 2010, with the release of New Mystery of the Emblem. However, due to Shadow Dragon's immense flop in the West, this game was exclusively released in Japan, signaling Nintendo's lack of faith in the franchise. After this disastrous release, we would now enter into an era known as the Dark Ages of Fire Emblem, where everyone was convinced that the franchise was dead and buried. I remember frequenting forums like Serenus Forest back at this time, and the mood was pretty glum. People had all but accepted that we would never again see a Fire Emblem game release in the West, and this shows clearly on the Google Trends, as the series' popularity drops all the way down to 10% in November 2011, the lowest ever recorded. Around this time is when we began to see the rise of Fire Emblem ROM hacks. Many people in the community decided that if they weren't going to get any new content from Nintendo, they might as well make their own. In January of 2012, some bold Norwegian guy decided to release his very first Fire Emblem video, a let's play of Binding Blade. We do actually see an uptick in popularity on the chart here, but I chalk this more up to Fire Emblem content just becoming more prevalent as more content creators starts coming onto the scene. But also, something else is happening here. The Dark Ages of Fire Emblem are coming to an end. In April of 2012, the trends start going up as Fire Emblem Awakening is released in Japan. However, it's not until the North American release in February of 2013 where the series' popularity truly starts to spike, going all the way up to 46% popularity. And even though the trend would decrease slightly, Fire Emblem would hover around the 20s to 30s for the next two years, showing that Awakening was not just good at sparking interest, but also keeping it. However, the popularity of Awakening would actually pale in comparison to what was about to come. In June of 2015, Fire Emblem Fates is released in Japan, causing the series' popularity to spike up to 58%, and then later explode all the way up to 87% as the game comes out in the Wests. I remember this era very well, because this is when my channel blew up. 
I went from just a couple thousand subs to nearly 50,000 over the span of a few months. This era was truly when Fire Emblem content started blowing up on YouTube. Awakening may have saved the franchise, but it was actually Fates that ushered in a golden age of Fire Emblem content on YouTube. This was a wild time to be a content creator. If you took your time to put out a well-made, well-edited video about Fire Emblem Fates, it was almost guaranteed to blow up and go viral. As if the recent success of Fire Emblem Fates wasn't enough, the franchise would see another massive boost in popularity as Fire Emblem Heroes came to everyone's phones in February of 2017. At this point, the series hit its peak popularity at 100%, and in terms of pure content, this was without a doubt Fire Emblem's golden age on YouTube. Of course, there's a lot of people who say that the Fire Emblem main fanbase and the Heroes fanbase are in fact two separate entities. And this argument isn't completely without merit, but as a content creator at the time, I can absolutely state that Heroes generated a lot of interest in Fire Emblem as a whole. There was absolutely a divide between the two fanbases, but there was also a huge overlap in the middle. Regardless of what people may say, Fire Emblem Heroes was good for the franchise as a whole in terms of drawing in new eyeballs to the series, even though you could argue against the ethics of gacha games and their exploitative marketing tactics. Personally, I was able to get a lot of my friends into playing mainline Fire Emblem games simply because they had downloaded Heroes on their phones. It made them a lot more receptive to trying out the games because they already knew some of the characters. Of course, with this newfound fame came a lot of problems as well. Many people claim that the community grew more toxic in this time as it drew in a lot of young and immature gacha players. But I think this is inevitable when any fandom rises to become a certain size. You just can't avoid it. I don't think the Fire Emblem community was any more or less toxic than any other fanbase at the time. It simply grew large enough to become mainstream. In May of 2017, we got a remake announced for the 3DS that no one expected or asked for in Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. While arguably a great game with a lot of love and passion put into it, it came very late in the 3DS's lifespan, and it was also a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, one of the most obscure games in the series. As a result, Echoes did little to spark a great interest in the fanbase, but may have slowed the popularity decline a little bit, going up to 64%, but slowly declining shortly after. A little bit later on, in June 2017, we also saw the first Fire Emblem spin-off game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, being released. It didn't have a big impact on the franchise's popularity, and I personally see spin-offs as more of a symptom of a series getting more mainstream, rather than a reason for any popularity spike. Another spin-off in Fire Emblem Warriors came out later in October of 2017, and while this one did a small job of sparking interest as it was a lot more Fire Emblem-like than the previous one, it still didn't really make any big waves compared to the massive boom of Fates and Heroes. Some people really enjoyed this game as the gameplay was quite fun, but most people just didn't really care about it due to its silliness and horrendous story. At this point, we now enter into a big content drought, or an era which would be called Zombie Emblem by some people. A long drought of popularity hovering around 20 to 30 percent, but not going down to the disastrous levels of the Fire Emblem Dark Age. There is a short spike as a trailer for Treehouses drops, but then a decline again as the game is delayed. But when it arrived, it arrived in a big way. Fire Emblem Three Houses launched for the Nintendo Switch, and with it ushered in a new golden age of Fire Emblem, bringing the popularity on YouTube up to 82%, very close to the levels we saw during the Fates era. Furthermore, the decline was much less steep than we had seen with previous titles. Three Houses was at the time, and is still the best-selling Fire Emblem game in the franchise, and also won several game awards. And let me tell you, it was a really great game for YouTube content. A well-edited video on Three Houses was very likely to go viral and blow up, bringing in a ton of views and new subscribers with it. In January of 2020, we see the release of the second Tokyo Mirage Sessions, followed by a pretty big spike in popularity, going all the way up to 42%. But I personally credit this boost in eyeballs to the Three Houses DLC, Cinder Shadows, which came out the month after. At this point, Three Houses was still fairly popular, and the DLC caught a lot of people's interests, even if it was criticized by some for being a bit of a cash grab. 
After this, we once again enter into a bit of a popularity flatline. Though not as severe as the Dark Ages, popularity would frequently dip below 20%, but never as low as 10. The arrival of the second Warriors game, Three Hopes, gave the series a slight boost, making it go up to 28% very briefly, but like with the other Warriors game before it, it didn't really make a big splash and it didn't really keep people's interest for a very long time. And now, at long last, we arrive at the latest installment in the franchise, in January 2023. Fire Emblem Engage comes out for the Switch, and it does somewhat well, causing the popularity to rise from 15% all the way up to 48 But this popularity is sadly short-lived, and it quickly goes back below 20% after just a few months. The DLC didn't even create a visible spike. Very few people cared about it. While Engage did well initially, the Golden Age was barely over half of that of Three Houses, and it lasted considerably shorter. In terms of sales, Engage may be a success, but in terms of YouTube popularity, it was a big flop. At the time of making this video, Fire Emblem's popularity on YouTube sits at 13%. We have not seen numbers like this since the pre-Awakening Dark Ages, and it seems like we are indeed in a bit of flatline in terms of popularity on YouTube. So to answer the question in the title of this video, has Fire Emblem decreased in popularity? Yes. Yes, it has. At least in terms of how many people are actively searching for and consuming content online. And my question to you is this. Why do you think that is? Is Engage really to blame for the series dropping off, or is it something else? I'd love to hear your answers in the comment section below. And here's another question. What would it take to see a fourth Golden Age on YouTube, where Fire Emblem popularity rises above 80%? Personally, I think that the rumored Fire Emblem 4 remake will not be the game to usher in this era. But rather, I think we need a strong, original, mainline Fire Emblem game, where they focus more on the story and developing a proper world like they did with Tree Houses, and preferably on a newly released console. I want to end this video off by saying that I'm not here to preach gloom and doom or say that Fire Emblem is dead, I just found some interesting data and I wanted to share it. Even though we are in a bit of a flatline right now, there's no reason we have to stay there. The franchise has seen dark times before, and every series is filled with highs and lows. For all we know, a great golden age could be on the horizon just ahead. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to say today. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make, so I would appreciate it if you leave a like and a comment. Sorry for my sick sounding voice, I hope to get better soon. Anyway, my name is Finn Mengs, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, bye bye.